It's 818, and every Tuesday and Thursday, we check in with St. Louis Post-Dispatch columnist, as well as KTRS contributor, Tony Messenger. He's in the midst of a five-part series uh, pitting judges versus judges, causing all sorts of controversy. Good morning, Tony Messenger. Morning, McGraw. Good morning, Kelly. How's everybody doing? We're great. Are, fine. are all five uh, all five out now? All five are out, and uh, your fine KTRS listeners can go to stltoday.com forward slash toll, T-O-L-L, to see all five series, uh, all five uh, pieces of my series. And what has the uh, what has the reaction been to this quite interesting story? A story that, quite frankly, not every nobody knew about until you shed some light on this. Well, thank you. Uh, it's been interesting. Definitely, the legal community is talking about it, and. Uh, I, I, I believe there will likely be some sort of movement on whether or not the Supreme Court's going to determine that this $3 charge that is charged on all court fees in circuit courts and is charged on some municipal court uh, uh, cases right now, I think the Supreme Court in some way, shape, or form is going to be forced to rule on whether or not it's constitutional. And if they follow their precedent. Uh, they'll rule that it's unconstitutional, the charge will go away, and the sheriff's retirement fund will have to go to the legislature and say, okay, we got to find some money somewhere else. Has Josh Hawley, the attorney general, mentioned anything about this? Uh, no, although I did hear from uh, uh, a legal source this morning that, that perhaps somebody will ask him. The, previ the, the previous attorney general issued uh, an opinion on this three times, and as my series indicated, he was very close to some of the state senators who were pushing to get this thing into the municipal court so that they could make more money for the sheriff's pensions. Um, I think it could be interesting to see whether or not the new attorney general decides to issue an opinion on this. I'm not sure if he's issued any opinions on state statutes yet. This would be a good one for him to uh, issue a decision on. But even if he does, uh, as the series points out, the the attorney general's opinion as it relates to a matter of law is just one attorney's opinion. Ultimately, I believe the Supreme Court's going to have to rule on this uh, because there's clearly a controversy. And the Sheriff's Retirement Fund has sent letters all over the state to circuit clerks trying to get them to enforce the previous Supreme Court order that this charge has to be collected in their courts. And those courts are refusing to collect it. So there's clearly a, a, a line drawn in the sand here that, that ultimately that's what the Supreme Court's for. They're going to have to make a decision. Your article, uh, last time you were on Tuesday, you were talking about it. And uh, I, I thought to myself, $3 per fee, per per court charge, what's, what's the big deal? And then I, was it the judge in Ferguson you quoted? Um, saying, you know, $3, and of course you have a th three or four cases and everything else that adds to $12, $15, and that's quite a bit of money for somebody making $8 an hour. That really struck home for me, and, and how this really is putting a price on their way to seek justice. Well, the, the, the judge uh, in question was Frank Batterot. He's the municipal judge in Overland, um, and he was very much involved in the, in the Ferguson controversy. Uh, because he is one of the most preeminent municipal judges in the area. And so he was sort of, when, when, when I was on the editorial board and I was pushing for the Supreme Court to issue the ultimate reforms that they did on the municipal courts, Batterot was the guy who was working on a, a, a committee of judges to try to come up with their own solution. Uh, and so that's why he became so ingrained in the Ferguson story. And that's what's important here uh, for, the, for the Supreme Court to understand as it relates to consistency. In Ferguson, as a response to Ferguson, the Supreme Court recognized that municipal courts in St. Louis County were overcharging poor people on a variety of, of, of issues. And in some cases, those municipalities were putting people in jail because they couldn't pay the bill. This is part of that same issue. It's the idea that the courts have to be for everybody. And if you stack $3 charge upon $3 charge upon $3 charge, they don't have access to the courts. And when you look at the circuit court, if, you, if you're a poor person and you want to file a, a lawsuit, you have the same sort of you know, civil dispute. You and I have a civil dispute over 
for our fence, you know, over whose backyard it belongs to. And we decide to go to civil court to resolve that dispute. You and I have enough money to put a down payment on whatever the ultimate court costs are that we have to do to have access to the courts. Poor people don't have that access, and that's why the issue of court costs is so important. If we make it so that they don't have access to the courts, then the courts are no longer for everybody. And the point that Ferguson, I mean, uh, Ferguson sort of skewed the issue all the way around, but one of the big issues, which everyone agreed with the protesters at Ferguson, was that they were being used as human cash machines to run their communities, one of them being this surcharge that, that, that they couldn't afford. So it, it sort of is a, it, it makes a lot more sense after reading these four or five articles. Well, I'm, I'm glad I made sense to you, McGraw, because, you know, if I made sense to you, then everybody else gets it too, right? <laughs> While we have you, Dave, have you talked to your good friend Deb Peterson about the editorial board coming out against the Metrolink tax? Uh, you know, being the former editorial page editor, I've decided not to have a whole lot of discussions with the uh, uh, editorial board. Give them, give them new, you know, space to roam and figure out where they're going. Um, I did read their editorials. I, I, I do think they got uh, some parts of it wrong, and uh, uh, I agree with their criticisms and the criticisms that I've made in my column on this that it would be much better. There's no doubt. Both the Metrolink, the, the soccer stadium, Scott Trade, the convention center, everything that we do in this region would be better if we did it as a city and a county together, if we were one, you know, union, one body, it would make the taxes better. It would make the investment better. It would make all of these proposals better. I agree with that. I'm going to keep pushing for that to happen. I hope the editorial board joins me in that push uh, to continue to push for city county merger, some sort of unity. But in the absence of that right now, the city has to invest. And I think the Metro Link in, in particular is something that I've been pushing for for a long time. There's nothing, the Ferguson Commission report showed us this, there's nothing that would be better for the poor people of St. Louis, particularly the ones who have been ignored on the north side, than to start getting them transit so that they can get to jobs, so that we can make an investment in the north side. And that's what Proposition 1 is about. It doesn't get us to the finish line. But I think it then gives the city some leverage to go to the county that has existing transit money and say, okay, we've got our money, you've got your money, let's go do this thing. Let's do this thing right. Let's hope that the new mayor and the existing county executive can create a better relationship and they can realize north-south transit is the way to go. We have to get it done, and it's an investment in the forgotten parts of St. Louis. Never a dull moment with Tony Messenger, St. Louis Post-Dispatch columnist and contributor here Tuesdays and Thursdays. Tony, thanks for checking in. Have a good week. Good to talk to you. 826, Big 550.